Welcome to Frederick County Public Library's Nature Scrub. We're here at the Cider Works at Distillery Lane in Jefferson, Maryland. Let's go talk to the owner, Rob, and see what we can learn about apples today. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Distillery Lane Cider Works. We are an apple orchard in Frederick County, Maryland. We're right outside the city of Burkittsville, Maryland, uh, in the northern part of the county. And here we grow um, about 45 different kinds of apples. You see some in the grocery store, but you might only see a half a dozen or 10 apples. Here we specialize in a lot of old American apples that once used to grow everywhere. There really was a Johnny Appleseed back in the day. He went around across the country spreading seeds out and seedlings. And we have some of those, the, the, the varieties that he actually started uh, in his tours around the country. So the apples that we have, uh, we have some just for eating out of hand that are just really good for your lunch box at school. Um, we have some that are just perfect for pies. They're, they're grown um, to be really tart and firm for your, your, your pies. There's summer Rambo and Bramley seedling. And then we have some that we grow just for making cider, for making uh, apple juice, if you will, and, um, and also for some, uh, some hard ciders, we call it. So this is an old-fashioned cider press. This is what they would use back in the colonial days to make cider from apples. And the operation of it is, is really very simple. You put an apple into this hopper, and inside the hopper, uh, it goes to, inside of here are some shark teeth that grind up the apples. So when you spin this wheel, you can see that the apple is being ground up and the parts of the apple fall down into this bin that has a, uh, a bag inside. So you're left with a ground up apple that's almost a rough applesauce. Then the next step in it is you fold up this bag of um, ground up apples and you screw this press down. And basically what that does is slowly pushes down on the bag of ground up apples and then the juice runs out the bottom and falls out of that tray, you put a bucket underneath it and voila, you've got apple juice. Um, this is just fun for people to see how it operates. We actually have a, a big um, hydraulic operator, one big commercial one that will squeeze about 20 of these bushels at one time. And so that's the basics of pressing cider. Uh, I can give you a quick tour of the orchard if you like and uh, follow us around and I'll show you some of the apples, many apples we grow here. So I wanted to show you where it gets started. How, how, where do we get the apple trees? And you can, you can take a seed out of an apple and grow it, but you're fairly certain that it won't be the same variety as it is in the seed. Uh, apples are very complex genetically, and the chances are one in 2,000 that you'd actually get the same tree out of that seed. So instead what you do is you go and the trees that you want to produce, that you want to grow, you take a clipping from that tree, something about three or four inches long off of that tree, and you graft it to a rootstock, a part of the, the, uh, the tree that grows below the ground. So you can see right down here by this white tape on some of these trees, um, here's a good example over here, we, grew, we grafted that on there, and by that we make a couple sharp cuts in, in the piece of wood, and a couple sharp cuts in the rootstock, and then we tape it up real good and seal it so that the air doesn't get to it. And with any luck, a, a bud will sprout on that tree. So this, this tree has grown this much in the last couple of months, so it'll probably get this high um, by the, uh, the end of this year. And that tree, we'll give it another year growing up here. We like to grow these, the new trees up by the barn here because they're a favorite of the deer. The deer love to eat young new trees. They're, they must be very tender. Um, so they're reluctant to come up here. This, they still come up here every once in a while. But for the most part, they, if we planted these out in the field and they're too, too small, the, the deer would just munch them all away. So this is where we, we start our trees in this little nursery bed. 
learn a little bit more about the apple tree life cycle with this book by Christy Matheson called Tap the Magic Tree. And a special thank you to Green Willow Books and HarperCollins Publishers for allowing us to read this story. There's magic in this bare brown tree. Tap it once, turn the page to see. Will you tap the book once with me? Here we go. Tap again. One, two, three, four. Now tap again, even more. Tap with me. Wow. Rub the tree to make it warm. Let's rub the tree together. We're bringing in all the warm sunshine that the tree needs. Touch each bud and see what forms. Do you see the tiny pink buds on the tree? Let's tap them. Maybe we can count the buds. Will you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see what forms. Wow, look at the beautiful flowers. Give the tree a little jiggle. Let's jiggle it. That's it. Now make your fingers wiggle. Look, all of the flower petals are dropping. This is what we see in the springtime. The apple tree grows flowers and then the petals drop. What will happen next? Brush away the petals. Swish, swish, swish. And blow the tree a tiny kiss. Shake the tree. Oh wow, what happened? What grew on our tree? Where the flowers were before, now we have apples. So before we had seven flowers, let's see if we have seven apples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what color are our apples? That's right, red apples. Okay, let's go back and shake the tree. What do you think will happen when we shake the tree? Plop, 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 kerplop. All of our apples fell down from the tree. Let's knock, knock on the trunk. And then stop. Do you want to knock with me one more time? Let's knock on the trunk. Wow, do you also notice what's happening to the leaves? In the summer, our leaves were green, but now they are starting to turn what color? That's right, yellow. I wonder what season is coming. Now our tree is all yellow. It must be fall. Now we're going to pat the leaves. Be gentle, please. Gently pat the leaves. Oh, look at those beautiful fall colors. Aha, now blow a whooshing breeze. Can you be the fall wind with me? Let's do a nice blowing breeze. Now we send our leaves flying. The leaves are falling off the tree. Clap your hands to bring the snow. So now we've left fall and we are in the season of winter. All the leaves are off the tree. Okay, be patient. Winter does seem long sometimes, doesn't it? Wait, don't go. The apple tree is still bare. Close your eyes and count to 10. Close your eyes, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Open your eyes. Magic. It begins again. 
So the apple tree's life cycle is starting all over again. New leaves are forming, and then we'll see the flowers and leaves followed by apples. Thank you for reading with me. This is, I brought you to this tree because this is one of my absolute personal favorite apples of the 45 varieties that we grow here. This is a French apple called Cavi Blanc, and it is a shrimp. I botched the pronunciation, but it is a pastry apple, and so you, you make a specialized dessert with this, and it is just my absolute favorite. And these trees, we, we grow them on, uh, this is a fully grown tree, so in our orchard we've switched over from these really big trees, which you can see in the background, to these smaller trees. They're really nice because they're much easier to pick and prune. You don't need to um, bring drag ladders around the orchard. Um, but as a result of being such small trees, they're not really that strong. So we grow, we put stakes holding the trees up, and we put wires that we, we tie the branches to to help give them support too. Uh, but if you get a chance to come out here this fall, we can, in late fall, we have some of these apples and uh, you can take them home and make your own pies with them. So I wanted to show you this one apple too. This is called the Newtown Pippin. This is one of the 45 varieties we grew. We, we planted this because in the history books, it tells us that this was Thomas Jefferson's favorite apple. Both Thomas and Jefferson grew this at Monticello and George Washington grew this at Mount Vernon. It's a wonderful apple, very flavorful, and it is great for just eating out of hand or for pies and sauce. At home, you can take different varieties of apples and explore apples some more by taste testing them and seeing how they taste different depending on the apple type that you've picked. You can also cut them in different ways and explore how they look when they are sliced. So you can cut them in half, and see the seeds this way, or you can cut them the opposite direction. And this gives us a better look at the seeds and also sort of a fun little star pattern inside. Then once you cut your apples, you can work on a fun art project at home by using these as apple stamps. All you need is some paint, and go ahead and squirt your paint on a plate, Put your apple into the paint just like a stamp and stamp them onto your paper. Thank you for joining us today and please follow us on Facebook for more great virtual programs.